So I've went ahead and put Connor McDavid and Austin Matthews on zero overall teams, and we're going to see these two guys race for a Stanley Cup. So I already know right off the rip, you're going to be asking, why do you have defensemen playing forward? This is the head coach preferred lines. Bro wants Austin Matthews playing with TJ Brody and Jake Muzzin. And I also couldn't be bothered to make sure that all the forwards are on the forward lines and all the D-men are on the D-lines because at the end of the day, they're all zero overall, so it really doesn't matter. So this is what the Edmonton Oilers look like, of course all zero overalls and I know it says 36 overall here but they're really zero overalls because their stats are as low as they can possibly go but none of that matters we're gonna go ahead and simulate this season and then we're gonna start adding players to both of these teams also if you're new to the channel and haven't already make sure you subscribe I'm trying to hit 50k subs by the end of summer and every sub means a ton and so far this is not looking good this team's getting blown out 24 nothing 9 nothing 11 nothing now the only games that these two teams are gonna be winning is when they play against each other okay so we're 42 games in to the season and nobody's picked up a point yet neither of these teams have scored a goal and we're 42 games in well Toronto's 41 that doesn't matter Austin Matthews and Connor McDavid can't do nothing with the team around them okay so this team's so bad Austin Matthews hasn't taken a shot yet and nobody on the Toronto Maple Leafs has even taken a shot zero points and zero shots ain't no way show to Connor McDavid though he's proving he's the greatest of all time as he's taken one shot this season I understand all these guys are zero overalls but I did not expect this team to be this bad so my ps5 just turned off all right then guess we're starting over this thing just made a really weird sound this thing's cooked isn't it it's about to turn off and never turn back on okay I don't know if it's just my ps5 bugging now or NHL 23 best NHL lines I'm pressing X I try to back out of this it just will not let me all right then can I edit lines at least what's going on here what's really going on so we we're finally able to get through the season Edmonton's gonna be finishing second last in the entire league they're picking up two wins well Toronto they're only gonna be picking up one point this season and that's coming in an OT loss versus the Edmonton Oilers McDavid's stats were absolutely incredible this season seven goals and zero assists for seven points and he was also minus 368 not gonna lie that's wild but I think the fact that Evan Bouchard was minus 469 is even worse how does that even happen meanwhile over in Toronto Austin Matthews is picking up six goals for six points he's minus 374 and the worst performing player on the Toronto Maple Leafs is gonna be Jake Muzzin minus 448 it's a tough scene what can I say once again in the postseason we're seeing the abs match up against the Tampa Bay Lightning in the Stanley Cup final and they're gonna be coming out on top in seven games so now that we have one season in the books it's time to start improving these teams so now it's time to start improving these teams and with Edmonton finishing higher in the standings than the Toronto Maple Leafs their wheels getting spun first and it's gonna be landing on a goaltender and that's possibly one of the best upgrades they could have gotten now this wheel spin has the potential to be amazing if they can get a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning or New York Rangers then they're getting a huge upgrade but they're getting the New York Islanders and I'm not going to be sleeping on Sorokin. So not only is Edmonton getting a massive upgrade to their team, but they also got an elite goaltender. Because if you really think about what could have happened here, we could have landed on the Arizona Coyotes and got whoever their starting goaltender is. Or we could have landed on the St. Louis Blues and got an absolute legend in Jordan Bennington. So considering all those options, I think they got a great pickup. Now it's time for us to spin the wheel for Toronto. Ideally, they would land on a goaltender as well, but that's not exactly what's going to be happening is they're going to be picking up a center. Since the Edmonton Oilers already landed on the New York Islanders, they've been taken off the wheel, but with this spin, it looks like the Toronto Maple Leafs are getting someone from the Minnesota Wild. It looks like Joel Erickson X is going to be joining the Toronto Maple Leafs as he's the highest overall center on this team at an 85 overall. So now that Edmonton has a pretty solid goaltender in between the pipes of them, I don't see this team ever getting beat by the Toronto Maple Leafs until they get a goal tender because realistically whenever these two teams match up it's a zero overall goaltender versus a 91 overall goaltender and I'm taking the 91 any day of the week 97 overall Connor McDavid three goals in 82 games I mean that's not bad he's surrounded by a bunch of zero overall players but explain to me how zero overall Matthias Ekholm tied him in points bro ain't no way we have to give a massive shout to Sorokin two wins a 907 with a 536 posting a 536 with a zero overall team is incredibly impressive so you got to give him a bit of respect because this is what was going on in Toronto Matt Murray leading the way with 44 losses with a 725 and a 1688. Gotta put some things into perspective. Now, Austin Matthews might be having a better offensive season, six goals and five assists for 11 points, but we have to keep in mind, he's got Joel Erickson neck by his side, so he's got a bit of support there. Now, it probably wouldn't hurt if I showed the standings, and once again, Edmonton's gonna be finishing above the Toronto Maple Leafs with two wins. Toronto did score five more goals, so we gotta watch out for them. But they also allowed like 500 more, so yeah, this team's not gonna be good for a while. Meanwhile, we're finally seeing a Canadian team hoisting the Stanley Cup as the Ottawa Senators are taking down the 
Vegas Golden Knights in five games. So once again, we're going to see Edmonton finish above Toronto in the standings, and now they're adding a right winger to the team. And as we know, there's a ton of elite right wingers in the league, and we're going to be landing on the Philadelphia Flyers. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to be adding one of the best in the entire league. But let's not act like the Edmonton Oilers are getting a complete scrub here because they're adding Travis Konecki to the team. Moving on over to Toronto's positions, ideally they pick up a goaltender, but it looks like they're going to be bringing in Austin Matthews a bit more support because now we're adding a left winger. Since the Edmonton Oilers brought in Sorokin last year, the Toronto Maple Leafs need to respond with a superstar of their own, but instead they're going to land on the Chicago Blackhawks. And I don't even know who they're going to pick up from here. So looking at left wingers on this team, that includes secondary position. So Tyler Johnson, you're the best thing we can get here. An 81 overall. I'll just leave it at that. I got nothing to say. Although the Edmonton Oilers are once again going to be finishing above the Toronto Maple Leafs, we got to stop sleeping on this team because they're picking up 44 goals this season. That's 30 more than the Edmonton Oilers. In between the pipes though, Edmonton's still miles away. But once Toronto gets some decent goaltender for themselves, Edmonton better watch out. McDavid's offensive numbers are going to be improving this season as Travis Konecki joined the team. McDavid's picking up 14 points while Konecki's picking up 12. Meanwhile, Austin Matthews is working his way back to being one of the best players in the entire league. 25 goals and 17 helpers for 42 points. Tyler Johnson's picking up 38 and so is Joel Eriksson neck. But even with the production of those three guys, it just wouldn't be enough and Toronto just wouldn't be able to make the playoffs. Only a few points shy. I mean, if they won maybe one, two more games, they could have made it in. But instead, Boston's going to win the Stanley Cup. Not going to lie, if Edmonton landed on their second goaltender position here, I think that would be hilarious. But instead, they're going to be adding another right winger to the team. Now, like, really think about that. Imagine if they landed on the Islanders and the Rangers. So you had a duo of Sorokin and Shesterkin. Meanwhile, Toronto would have no one. But instead, they're getting the Montreal Canadiens, so it's probably going to be Cole Caulfield. But as I mentioned earlier, this includes secondary positions, so we're actually going to be adding Nick Suzuki to the team over Cole Caulfield because he is one overall higher. So 87 overall Nick Suzuki, I'm not going to complain about that addition to the team. So for Toronto, it really doesn't matter what position they land on. Ideally, it's a goaltender, but it's not. It's going to be a right defenseman. Now we just need you to land on a good... Now we just need you to land on a team that has a good D, man. But luckily, you guys already took someone away from the Chicago Blackhawks, so you don't have to worry about landing on them again. Now you got the LA Kings, and I already know they got an elite right defenseman. So although Drew Doughty's not a goaltender, he's going to be doing everything in his power to help the defense on this team. All right, so I'm just going ahead and simulating through the season here. But the Anaheim Ducks just lost to the Edmonton Oilers, and they weren't the only team because so did the San Jose Sharks. Keep in mind, all Edmonton has is Connor McDavid, Nick Suzuki, and whoever else I add to the team, Travis Konecki. They also have Sorokin in between the pipes, but those are the three offensive guys. And they beat the Anaheim Ducks and San Jose Sharks. Now, we gotta terminate these franchises. Ain't no way you lost to a zero overall team. Like, this team's 2-49 right now, and they haven't even played the Leafs yet. That's gonna be another two wins. They might win five games this season. Who would've thought? So, the Edmonton Oilers are making big moves. They're jumping up to four wins this season, while the Toronto Maple Leafs are gonna be going 0-82. The Oilers are slowly separating themselves from the Toronto Maple Leafs, so Toronto's got to respond quick. No surprise here, McDavid's going to be leading the way for Edmonton, picking up 49 points. While over in Toronto, Austin Matthews is having a career year as he's picking up 52 points, including 36 goals, so he was lighting the lamp this season. So the LA Kings just made the Stanley Cup final after losing Drew Doughty. Drew Doughty didn't get replaced by anyone, I just took him off the team, and they made it all the way to the Stanley Cup final and lost to the Boston Bruins in 6 games. But how did they make it that far? I took your best defenseman off the team, arguably one of your best players, and you got better. Alright then. So as we know, it doesn't really matter what position Edmonton picks up, it's going to be an upgrade for them, and it looks like they're going to begin to write D-man. And if this team's somehow able to land on the Colorado Avalanche, then it's just complete wraps, adding Kale McCarr to the team, but it doesn't look like that's going to be happening, and they're just going to be picking up someone from the Anaheim Ducks. Unfortunately, there's no superstar right defenseman on the Anaheim Ducks, so Jamie Drysdale, you're going to be our best option at an 83 overall. Moving on to our wheel spin for the Toronto Maple Leafs, I don't need to mention what this team needs, and it's not a left defenseman, but that's what we're going to add. And although I said they don't need a left defenseman, we have to remember their best D-man right now is Drew Doughty. Wait, is it Drew Doughty? Yeah, it is. Honestly, I can't even remember who I've added from each team, but we landed on the Winnipeg Jets, and there was a Norris finalist on this team. Actually, no, he wasn't. Never mind, he was not a Norris finalist. He should have been one of the finalists for the Norris Trophy, though, because he had an incredible season. Josh Morrissey, 89 overall. Nah, you got disrespected. I'm just gonna keep it a thousand. I understand why the guys ahead of you were ahead of you, but I mean, you had an incredible season, and you should get a bit of recognition for that. So we have ourselves some massive storylines. Edmonton's taking a step back, only picking up two wins, but the Toronto Maple Leafs are finally able to win their first game of the video. They're taking down the Edmonton Oilers in a shootout win, and since they finally won a game, I'm giving them the first spin in the offseason. McDavid's going to be having his best season yet, picking up 65 points, consisting of 37 goals and 28 helpers, while Austin Matthews, along with the rest of his team, are all taking a step back, and Matthews is only going to be able to pick up 45 points this season. Also, here's what's happening in the postseason. Carolina's taking home a Stanley Cup. Shout out to them. Alright, so boom, Toronto's finally getting the first spin of the wheel. 
I'm putting them first ahead of Edmonton. We'll see what happens here. They're getting a right defenseman. For some reason, I have a feeling this just isn't going to work out for them, and they're going to get screwed by me doing this. But that doesn't really matter. We're praying for the Colorado Avalanche here, and we're going to be fairly close, but we're landing on the Columbus Blue Jackets, and I don't really know how well this is going to work out for them. Now, if Toronto landed on left defenseman, they would have been adding Zach Wierenski to the team. But instead, they're going to be adding Adam Boquist. Still a good defenseman, but he's definitely not Zakarensky. Moving on to the spin for the Edmonton Oilers, it looks like this team's going to be picking up another forward piece as they're adding a center. Honestly, every single NHL team has one elite center, so it doesn't matter. Edmonton's going to begin a massive upgrade. Robert Thomas. They got Robert Thomas. I don't care if he's not the highest overall on the team. He's by far the best player. Connor McDavid and Robert Thomas, two of the best players in the entire league. Edmonton's got this one locked up. I mean, it actually works out that Robert Thomas is the top center on this team. So he's teaming up with Connor McDavid and 87 overall Robert Thomas, the GOAT. It's wraps for Toronto. They're not making that 3-1 comeback. So we're five seasons in and Edmonton and Toronto are still at the bottom of the league. So from now on, I'm adding two players each season. Because if not, we're going to be here a while. But now we have an idea of where these teams are headed. And they're not really heading anywhere because they're still at the bottom of the league and they both picked up one win this season. So things aren't looking great. Austin Matthews is bouncing back this season though. He's picking up 33 goals and 22 helpers for 55 points. Well, McDavid's going to be an absolute stud like usual. No surprise here. 72 points, 41 goals, 31 helpers. And Robert Thomas, 46 points. Ain't no way you're allowing Travis Konecki to outscore you. I need you to step it up. Then again, there is a possibility he wasn't on the first line. Depending on what the coach is cooking here though, he might not be utilizing my man Robert Thomas like that. Because we all know he's the best player on this team. Connor McDavid can move aside. Robert Thomas is him. Also, shout out to Alexander Ovechkin. He's taking home the Stanley Cup. Love to see it. So we'll start off with one spin from the Edmonton Oilers as they finished higher in the standings, and it looks like they're going to be adding another left winger to the team. So it looks like Edmonton's going to begin an elite upgrade to the team. They're landing on the Ottawa Senators. The Edmonton Oilers are going to begin a bit of grit as they're going to be bringing 89 overall Brady Kachuk onto the team. Moving on to Edmonton's next spin, we're improving the defensive core on this team as we're going to be bringing in another right defenseman. Edmonton might already have one right defenseman on the team, but he's not the same caliber as this guy because we're adding somebody from the Boston Bruins and I think you already know who I'm adding. Absolutely nothing to consider here. Charlie McAvoy, you're a new member of the Edmonton Oilers and they're building a pretty solid team here. Charlie McAvoy, Robert Thomas, Connor McDavid, who's stopping that big three? The answer is every single zero overall that's still on the team. That's who's stopping the Edmonton Oilers. Now that we've given Edmonton those two upgrades, it's time for Toronto to finally get one and they're finally adding a goaltender to the team. So if we can land on the Tampa Bay Lightning, then this video got really interesting. So this is the biggest spin for the Toronto Maple Leafs in history. They need a big team here. This is not the team they wanted. Now, I'm not saying Craig Anderson's a bad goalie, but he's 41 years old and 83 overall, and he's the best one the Buffalo Sabres have. There were some better options like Vasilevsky and Shesterkin, but we got Craig Anderson. He's ready to hold it down. After that disappointing spin, Toronto's looking to not be disappointed once again, and it looks like we're bringing a forward onto the team, and that's going to be a left winger. But which left winger is it going to be? We're going to have to wait and see, and it looks like it's going to be coming from the Seattle Kraken. So looking at the potential left wingers here, we have Jared McCann, and Andre Burakovsky. I think you already know who we're going with. They're the same overall, so I mean, same difference. But this guy is Andre Burakovsky. And if you know, you know. All right, we gotta have a discussion here. So of course, both of these teams are gonna be sitting at the bottom of the league. That should be no surprise. The Edmonton Oilers, they're gonna be finishing 31st. Five wins, 76 losses, one OT loss. No issue with that. How did Toronto not win a single game? I just added two more players to your team and you got an upgrade in between the pipes and Craig Anderson and somehow you did worse. Yeah, you had three OT losses, but no, nah, real talk. What are we doing here? Austin Matthews, 54 points. Congratulations. Andre Burakovsky, you're the real hero of this team. Nine goals, 32 uppers, 41 points. Second on the team in scoring. Without you, this team isn't getting a single OT loss. Meanwhile, this is what Connor McDavid's doing, but that doesn't matter. No, nah, like the Leafs really didn't win a single game. I gave them two new NHL players and they still couldn't win you know what toronto you're gonna be getting the first spin because you impressed me so much with how bad you were like i didn't even think that would be possible left winger okay who's it gonna be like i don't think we're actually comprehending how bad this team was like after i gave them a good goaltender and somebody else i can't remember who it was they got worse like how are you getting worse the leafs are just shooting bricks right now goaltender right winger left d man center slash right wing center slash right wing Left D man. So from the Tampa Bay Lightning, you're getting Alex Kalorn. Now I'm not disrespecting Alex Kalorn by any means, but he's also not Kucherov, Hedman, Stamkos, Braden Point, Sergachev, or Vasilevsky. Like I'm fully convinced that we're gonna land on goaltender again, 
and then somehow we're going to land on the Chicago Blackhawks, even though that's not an option. Imagine me resetting these teams only for your goalies to be Peter Mrazek and Craig Anderson. Okay, so we landed on the Toronto Maple Leafs, and here's the rule for this because I knew this would eventually happen. You get to select somebody from your alumni team. And looking at Toronto's alumni team, it looks like they're going to be adding Mike Gardner to the team, passing on a lot of solid players here, a lot of legends. But 89 Mike Gardner, no issue with that. Looks like someone's getting cut from the team. How about Victor Mette for Mike Gardner? That's a fair deal. Now, Edmonton, you just have to keep doing what you're doing. You're actually in a pretty good position right now. You're going to be adding another left defenseman to the team, and that's actually probably what you need. And there's still a ton of teams left that have great defense, and that's including the Colorado Avalanche, but we're going to be passing on them, and we're over to the Calgary Flames. So Mackenzie Weger is going to be going from one Alberta team to another, and he's joining the Edmonton Oilers. You alongside Charlie McAvoy is going to be an elite duo. Moving on to Edmonton's next spin, we probably could add a forward to the team, but nah. Let's add another left defenseman, because we clearly don't have a good enough defense already. I mean, obviously we don't have a good defense, but... We only have, what, three forwards on this team, maybe four? And if we landed on left winger, then we could have got Alexander Ovechkin. But instead, I think we're bringing in Rasmus Sedin. So Washington has a ton of options that we're not going to be adding to the Edmonton Oilers. So it looks like it is going to be Rasmus Sedin. 83 overall Rasmus Sedin, or it could go with Farivari here. I'm going to pass on Rasmus Sedin and bring Farivari to the team. He's a defensive defenseman, and I don't really know how many opportunities we're going to get at bringing a defensive defenseman onto the team. So Martin Farivari, although you don't produce the offensive number Rasmus Sedin does, you're a great defensive defenseman, and that's exactly what the Edmonton Oilers need. So I've completely broken the game at this point because Jamie Drysdale is going to be playing on the second forward line. He's also going to be playing on the second defensive pairing. I've done everything in my power to remove him from the second forward line, but I can't. No matter what I do, he either plays on the second forward line or he doesn't play at all. So the Toronto Maple Leafs are taking some big strides this season, picking up 11 wins while the Edmonton Oilers are only able to pick up six. Is Toronto about to overtake Edmonton? Ain't no way Robert Thomas is going to let that happen. I like how this video has slowly went from Connor McDavid versus Austin Matthews to Robert Thomas versus Austin Matthews. Because if you really think about it, Robert Thomas is a step ahead of him. Also, how did Jamie Drysdale only pick up 42 points when he was on the second forward line and second defensive pairing? Bro was on the ice for literally two thirds of the game and only picked up 42 points. Nah, you're a trash. Well, over in Toronto, Austin Matthews is an absolute beast. 45 goals and 50 assists for 95 points. Mike Garner is going to be at his side picking up 81. And the second greatest player of all time, Andre Burakovsky, he's picking up 69 points. But as we know, neither of these teams are going to be making the playoffs, so let's go get some more upgrades. This is the first time I've ever spun Toronto's wheel first, where they actually earned it. We're how many seasons in? This is the first time they've ever finished above the Edmonton Oilers, but now we're going to be adding another right winger to this team. There's still a handful of elite teams left on this wheel, and it looks like Toronto's going to be getting a massive upgrade as they're landing on the floor to pass. Panthers. The Edmonton Oilers might have got Brady Kachuk last offseason, but now the Toronto Maple Leafs are getting Matthew Kachuk. Toronto's forward core is looking pretty strong. They could use a bit more help on the defense though, and that's exactly what's happening is they're going to be adding another right defenseman to the team. So I'm still looking at the Colorado Avalanche here. They have Kale McCarr. Ideally, that's the best possible upgrade. It's going to be the Nashville Predators though, and that's not the worst thing in the world. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's also not the best. Because since Roman Yossi is a left defenseman, we're not going to be adding him to the team, so we'll have to settle for Tyson Barry. And honestly, at an 85 overall, this isn't a bad pickup by any means. So it's time for us to go ahead and spin Edmonton's wheel, and it looks like they're going to be adding another right defenseman to the team. Toronto wasn't able to close out in their last spin, so we're going to see if Edmonton has a chance to get Kale McCarr, and we're landing on the Colorado Avalanche, so you already know who's coming to the team. So of course, this is the man we're going to be adding to the team, the absolute legend, Curtis McDermott. Like honestly, there's no one on the Colorado Avalanche I'd rather have other than him. Nah, but real talk, we already know who I'm bringing to the team. Kale McCarr, it's time for you to team up with Connor McDavid and Robert Thomas. We got an amazing big three here, and I don't think this team can be stopped. Then again, they only won six games last season, so we'll have to see how well that takes going to age. Moving on to our next spin for the Edmonton Oilers, we're going to bring in some help for the forward cores. We're getting a left winger. Honestly, it doesn't really matter to me which team we land on because it's going to be an upgrade and we're going to be getting the San Jose Sharks. Although the San Jose Sharks are a pretty depleted team, Tomas Rowe plays center slash left wing, so that's who's joining the Edmonton Oilers next. The Edmonton Oilers are having a massive bounce back season as they're picking up 20 wins, only 8 shy of 3rd last in the entire league, while the Toronto Maple Leafs, not a bad season for them as well, they're picking up 19 wins. No surprises over here as we're going to see Austin Matthews leading the Toronto Maple Leafs once again with 92 points. While Connor McDavid stepping up the production this season, he's up to 91 points, but Robert Thomas only minus 1 the best plus minus on the team, the heart and soul of this team right now. All right, for the rest of this video, I won't mention Robert Thomas because I'm actually talking about him way too much. It's gotten a bit ridiculous, not gonna lie. So it looks like the next position Edmonton's adding onto their team is gonna be another center. And it doesn't look like they're gonna be getting too lucky here as they're landing on the Arizona Coyotes. Unfortunately, Clayton Keller's secondary position isn't center, but I mean, Nick Schmaltz and 86 overall, I'm not gonna pass up on him. So Schmaltz, welcome to the Edmonton Oilers. Moving on to Edmonton's next spin, it looks like we're gonna be adding another goaltender to the team, 
So finally, this team has a tandem. And this is a massive spin because there's still a ton of elite goaltenders left on the board here, but we're landing on the Detroit Red Wings. But respectfully, you can't be sleeping on my guy Villihu, so a St. Louis Blues legend. Granted, he only played for us for like two seasons, two and a half seasons, that doesn't really matter. When he played for us, he was elite. Toronto needs to respond with a goaltender in one of these next two spins. Unfortunately, it's not going to be the first one because they're getting a right winger. Not having a goaltending tandem is definitely going to hurt Toronto because they still have a zero overall backing up Craig Anderson. I completely forgot who was in between the pipes for a second, but nah. Craig Anderson in a zero overall isn't going to cut it. We landed on the Dallas Stars, by the way. Unfortunately, the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to have to pass on guys like Jason Robertson and Rupa Hintz, but luckily Joe Pavelski is still here and he's an 87 overall. All right, Toronto, biggest spin of the video. Can you respond getting a goaltender here? And it looks like you're just missing out on one as you're going to be adding another center. But this spin won't be all for nothing if you can bring an elite centerman onto the team and you're just missing on the Edmonton Oilers, so you're going to be bringing someone on from the Carolina Hurricanes, but they still got a ton of options. Now, Sebastian Ajo isn't bad by any means. But if you landed on the Edmonton Oilers, you have got somebody from their alumni team. And who's on the Edmonton Oilers alumni team? We already know who I'm talking about, Wayne Gretzky. So you could have had Wayne Gretzky, but instead you're getting Sebastian Ajo. That's a tough thought to process. So I understand that this team still has a bunch of zero overalls, but I was expecting more than 29 wins. I don't know why, I was expecting like 35. Toronto's only picking up 20, so what? They won an additional game this season? We gotta speed this up, because I don't know why, I expected this to go much quicker. Three spins on the next upgrade wheel. We're finishing this up. Also, you don't really need to see their stats, but Austin Matthews picked up 91 points, while Connor McDavid was cruising in Edmonton, and he's picking up 85. So in the off season, we're gonna do three wheel spins, and then next off season, we're doing four. After that, we'll have an entire lineup, and then these two teams have to go out there and compete for a Stanley Cup. So instead of doing three wheel spins for Edmonton, three for Toronto, I'll do one for Edmonton, one Toronto. I'll just go back and forth. Edmonton starting off with a right winger. The right winger is going to be coming from the Pittsburgh Penguins, and I think that's Jake Getzel. And that's exactly who we're bringing onto the team. So we got 88 overall, Jake Getzel on the Edmonton Oilers. Moving on to Toronto spin, they're going to keep improving the defense, and they're now bringing on another left defenseman. Also, you might notice that there's only five NHL teams left. Once we get through this entire wheel, I'm putting every single team back on the wheel. And by the way, we're taking somebody from New Jersey. And a left defenseman for the New Jersey Devils isn't ideal as they're bringing Siegenthaler onto the team. Heading back over to Edmonton's wheel, it looks like they're going to be bringing another left winger onto the team. And that left winger is going to be coming from the Edmonton Oilers, so we're bringing a historic player back to this franchise. Up until this point, Edmonton's luck's been incredible, but it looks like it's finally going to run out as we're going to have to pass on a ton of great players here, dropping all the way down to Ryan Smith. Is his name Ryan Smith? I'm assuming it is. Yes, it is. 85 overall Ryan Smith. Considering all the options on Edmonton's alumni team, this sucks. Toronto's hoping to not get screwed like Edmonton, and they landed on the goaltender position, and there's only three teams left, so you gotta hope for the best here. So there's one team here that stands above the rest. It's the New York Rangers, and that's exactly who the Toronto Maple Leafs are gonna be landing on. Igor Shesterkin, welcome to the Leafs. This is gonna be an absolute game changer for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I think they can now officially compete with the Edmonton Oilers. So we're moving on to Edmonton's final spin of the offseason, and they're gonna bring another defenseman onto their team. And by adding a defenseman from the Vegas Golden Knights, Edmonton's officially rounded out their entire decor. There wasn't really too much to consider with the Vegas Golden Knights, so we're gonna have Shea Theodore round out their core. The only team left on the wheel of NHL teams is the Vancouver Canucks, so we're taking their center, and that's gonna be Elias Pettersson. So we've gone ahead and done three spins for the Oilers and three for the Leafs. Now it's time to see if one of these teams can make the playoffs. So even with all the upgrades the Toronto Maple Leafs received, they're not making the playoffs finishing 20th in the entire league, and you might be wondering where the Edmonton Oilers are. Well, they're going to be doing the complete opposite. Second in the entire league, 51, 26, and 5. This team's competing for a Stanley Cup while Toronto can't even crack the playoffs. There's different levels to this. Matthews, 84 points is good and all, but I mean, missing the postseason? Couldn't be me. Meanwhile, Carter McDavid's on a different type of timing. 45 goals and 45 assists for 90 points. The scoring on this team's absolutely elite. The depth's amazing. So Edmonton's finally reached the postseason. They're ready to go on a run here, and they want to close this video out with a win. But that's not quite what's happening, because after taking game one, they're going to drop four straight. They're falling in the first round. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to show this screen. We'll leave it at that. So here's how we're going to finish this off. Toronto has a center, right winger, left winger, and left defenseman left on their wheel. Over in Edmonton, they have two centers, a left winger, and a right winger. I've refreshed the NHL team's wheel, so every team's back here. I'm going to alternate the spins, one for Edmonton, one for Toronto, and on whatever team it lands on, I can pick one player that corresponds to one of their remaining positions. So hypothetically, if it landed on the National Predators for Edmonton's spin, I can't bring Roman Yossi onto the team. They do have some forward spots though, so I'm bringing a forward from the Calgary Flames. The center I'm bringing over from the Calgary Flames is going to be Elias Lindholm. Moving on to Toronto's spin, they're taking someone away from the Florida Panthers once again. The Leafs are bringing in one of the best defensive forwards in the game and Barkov onto their team. The next spin for the Edmonton Oilers is going to see them taking someone away from the Chicago Blackhawks. 
one of the worst possible selections they could have landed on. The Edmonton Oilers are going to be stuck with selecting Jonathan Taves, but considering what Chicago had, this was the best option. Moving on over to the next spin for the Toronto Maple Leafs, they're going to be landing on the San Jose Sharks. The Toronto Maple Leafs were laughing at the Jonathan Taves pickup until they had to select A3 overall Barabanov. So Edmonton's got two more spins left. They can bring in a left winger and a right winger. They're going to be landing on the New York Rangers. I take that back. It's the New York Islanders but it doesn't really matter. There's elite players on both of these teams. Unfortunately, a lot of the players on this team don't play left or right wing, but we'll settle for Brock Nelson, who's sitting at 86 overall. Moving on over to Toronto's second last spin, they still need to pick up another defenseman, and they couldn't get one from the St. Louis Blues as they have Tori Krug. But they do have another winger spot open, so we'll see what happens here. The Toronto Maple Leafs decide they're going to pass on Tori Krug and instead pick up Jordan Cairo, so for their final spin, they're going for a left defenseman. On Edmonton's final spin, this is going to involve them picking up a right winger, so we got to pick up one of the best in the entire game, but landing on the Carolina Hurricanes, and I already know they got an elite right winger. Andre Sashnikov, you're going to be the perfect guy to close it out for the Edmonton Oilers, and now they've got an entire team locked up here. And for Toronto's final spin, they're going to be picking up a left defenseman, and unfortunately, they're landing on the Philadelphia Flyers. Definitely not what this team was hoping for. The top defenseman on the Philadelphia Flyers is Ivan Provorov, though he's an 85 overall. They could have been put in a much worse situation. Imagine if they landed on the Arizona Coyotes. They would have been bringing like a 79 overall to the team. So here's what the final roster for the Edmonton Oilers is looking like. Connor McDavid, Jake Getzel, and Andre Sashnikov, they're going to be manning that first line. We got a ton of depth here. Defensively, Shea Theodore, Kale McCarr, Charlie McAvoy, Mackenzie Wieger. I have absolutely no issues with what they have here. And in between the pipes, of course, Sorokin and Huso. I think it's safe to say they're a step above the Toronto Maple Leafs. But it's not like the Toronto Maple Leafs are full of a bunch of bums. Austin Matthews, Matthew Kachuk, Mike Gardner, Jordan Cairo, Elias Patterson, Sasha Barkov. They're going to be the top six on this team. Defensively, though, this team can't even compete with the Edmonton Oilers lineup. Josh Morrissey and Drew Doughty are both leading the way at 85 overalls. But the other guys, not the best in the world. They're still solid NHL players, but definitely not the likes of Kale McCarr and Shea Theodore. Thankfully though, you have won the best in the game in between the pipes, Igor Shesterkin, so maybe he can save you guys. We'll have to find out. So at the end of the season, we're going to be crowning a champion. It's either going to be the Toronto Maple Leafs or the Edmonton Oilers, because one of these teams better win the Stanley Cup, because if they don't, then I don't know what I'm going to do. That's just real. So at the end of our final season here, the Edmonton Oilers, 63-17-2, first in the entire league. Right behind them, though, is the Toronto Maple Leafs, 58-18-6. One of these teams better win a Stanley Cup. Ain't no way I simulate this season. They both get knocked out in the first round. It should be no surprise, Austin Matthews was an absolute dominant force for the Toronto Maple Leafs. 40 goals and 48 helpers for 97 points. Well, McDavid's going to prove he's a bit different. 51 goals and 50 assists for 101 points. Just a few more in Austin Matthews. He just had to show that he's that guy. So here's what our playoff bracket's looking like. The Edmonton Oilers are taking on the Nashville Predators in the first round, while the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to be taking on the New York Islanders. I'm going to simulate through the entire playoffs, and one of these teams better come out on top. Ain't no way the Oilers just lost in seven games to the Nashville Predators. They're joking, right? This has to be a prank. And then the Leafs are going to fold in the second round in five games, falling to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Okay, new rule since this video is completely falling apart. Whoever wins the Stanley Cup, one player from that team is going to the Toronto Maple Leafs since they made it further in the postseason. So hopefully it's the Tampa Bay Lightning and then we'll just steal Vasilevsky or Kucherov. It really doesn't matter between those two players. It's the Tampa Bay Lightning. So I'm going to have some debating to do. Kucherov or Vasilevsky? So I'm going to go ahead and bring Kucherov onto the team because he would replace Barabanov on that fourth line. Whereas Vasilevsky, he's only a plus two overall boost from Shesterkin. So I feel like Kucherov's going to have a bigger impact on how this team performs. But who really knows because both of these teams keep on folding. After adding Nikita Kucherov to the Toronto Maple Leafs, they're going to be picking up 62 wins this season while the Edmonton Oilers are going to be picking up 58. Kuch had a bigger impact than expected. So he's going to be leading the way with 89 points this season. Honestly, I don't really care what McDavid had for points, but I'll still check it out. I just want these teams to perform in the playoffs. Over in Edmonton, we're seeing McDavid pick up 46 goals and 50 assists for 96 points. None of that matters though. We're heading to the postseason. Once again, number one and number two in the entire league, at least make the Eastern and Western Conference Finals this time around, because you couldn't even do that last season. After the first round, I was thinking there's a high probability that both of these teams make the Stanley Cup Final. They both complete sweeps in the first round. And then in the second round, both of them went to seven games, but Edmonton's going to be falling to Calgary, but Toronto's getting past Boston. So Matthews, you have a great chance to win this challenge. All you have to do is win eight more games. Shouldn't be that difficult. Ain't no way. You won game one, eight to one. Then you won game two, three to one. Then you allowed seven goals, you allowed five goals, you allowed six goals, and then you got shut out. You were 62, 13, and seven this season. Austin Matthews picked up 16 goals and 16 assists for 32 points in 21 games. And you lost in the Stanley Cup final to the Calgary Flames, who are missing their top player in Elias Lindholm. 
Ain't no way. You had the greatest opportunity to close this out. Austin Matthews, you had it handed to you. You were basically given this challenge, but the team's like, nah, screw it. We want to lose. So we've already taken Elias Lindholm off the Calgary Flames. So I guess it's now time to take away Jonathan Huberto. I honestly don't know what to do for these two teams anymore. So the Toronto Maple Leafs just went 67, 11, and four. Edmonton won 58 games. None of that matters. You will only see this screen if they win a Stanley Cup. If one of these two teams makes it to the Stanley Cup final, then we'll see this screen again. If not, we'll be adding another player. I mean, I guess if I add another player, I'll have to show you who won the Stanley Cup. So give me two seconds. And I'm not messing around this time. Right to the end of the postseason. I'm not even simulating round by round. They lost the first game. I thought they were going to lose this series. I'm not even paying attention to what Edmonton's doing. I'm just focused strictly on Toronto. They've made it through two rounds now. Edmonton's already fallen. This team's losing. They lost. They lost again. Carolina doesn't have Aho or Seshnikov. Who does that team have left? Respectfully, I know Martin Natchez is there, but really, outside of him, who is left on this Carolina Hurricanes team? Because whoever's left, that's who I'm taking. Ain't no way. Who led the way? Okay, Kucherov was there. Bruh. Ain't no way. Look how many of the leading scorers were on Toronto. Who led? Ca You're joking. You're kidding me, right? No. 81 overall, Jesse Pugliarvi just led this team to a Stanley Cup. No, that didn't happen. That did not happen. Does anyone on Carolina actually make Toronto better? I don't think there is, because I'm not adding Jesse Pugliarvi. You're joking, right? If anything, I'll add him to Edmonton and make them weaker. No, this game's stupid. All right, Jacob Slavin, you're coming to the team. I'm taking you over Martin Natchez just because you'll help the defense on this team. And clearly, we need help there. I mean, I don't know where we need help because this team's just a complete and utter failure, but... There's no way you make this team worse. I refuse to believe that. So the Leafs continue to be absolutely incredible, winning 68 games this season, while somehow Edmonton's only winning 49. I'm not really too sure how that works. I'm not even looking at the playoff picture. None of that matters. We're simulating the postseason. And finally, we're here. This has taken way too long. I do not care who wins between these two teams. Honestly, I'm kind of cheering for Edmonton just because they won like 20 less games. But it also wouldn't bother me if Toronto won. I just don't care at this point. Toronto's coming in, absolutely smoking Edmonton, and Austin Matthews is winning the challenge. He's winning the Stanley Cup first. I got nothing else to say. Thank you for watching. How did a 69 win team or 68 win team they were last year fold to the Calgary Flames who are without their best player? Actually, hold on. Why am I talking smack about the Calgary Flames? The Carolina Hurricanes beat us, led by Jesse Pugliarvi. Never forget that.